Bob ended up in the ICU not long after the cell infusion because his ability to breathe for himself was compromised. Uh, he's got the ventilator breathing for him at this point. Uh, he's on some support for his blood pressure. There's no doubt that Bo's current situation is critically ill. It's so new that nobody knows really how he's going to react. He's strong. They say he's in the best hands. Hoping so. When you're running a clinical trial with a first in human treatment, there's no textbook. You're excited because you possibly have something that's going to make a meaningful difference in patients. But at the same time, you really never know what's going to happen. at the National Institutes of Health. Every doctor is engaged as a sleuth, trying to ask that fundamental question, why? Um, let me think about that for a second. Not all clinical trials involve a therapeutic intervention. Uh, some of them are what we call natural history studies to understand in much greater detail what really is the nature of a particular illness that we don't yet have answers for, but we want to develop them. I think it's almost always the case that if you understand a rare disease at a detailed level, it sheds light upon other much more common conditions. Mommy. Yes, Lucy. I miss Joel. You miss Joel? Oh, sweetie, I know he misses you. Lucy Weiss has a rare genetic disorder called Job syndrome, which has robbed her of a normal childhood. For years, she has been observed by the doctors at Building 10, who have tried to manage a disease that has left Lucy with an incomplete immune system and made even the most routine infection life-threatening. What are we doing once we get to any? When we're going to unpack our stuff, say hi to your nurses and your doctors, and soon after that, they're going to bring you some medicine. There's not a lot of guarantee, regardless of what we do. We believe if we were to do nothing, the way things were going was really not sustainable. She was going to reach a point where she was going to be sick in a way that there was nothing we could do to treat her and that she would not survive. Because of a single defect in Lucy's DNA, she is unable to produce the kind of immune cells that would fight certain infections, like staph and yeast, and help heal her wounds. Northwest inpatient unit, that's where you're going. Good morning, how are you guys? Lucy is here at Building 10 in the hope that her doctors can give her a new, complete immune system. Don't we help you, sweetie? I got it. Take it. Are you sure? Yes. It is a hope for a second chance. I feel like Lucy's been given a couple second chances, honestly. And this is a big one. How about I open the door? Sure, thanks. This could be completely life changing. <sighs> for all the advancements in medical science, there is much we simply do not know about our own immune system. That it is a powerful force protecting us from disease and infection has long been understood. But how we can harness it, amplify it, even genetically change it, is at the cutting edge of medical research. Our immune system is so powerful. It can eradicate the flu. It can eradicate a bacteria. It's shocking how powerful the immune system can be. High fever, aches, pains, cough, sneezing, runny nose. All of these are caused not by a foreign invader, but by our body's own immune response to it. Most people think when they get sick, they get a cold, they get a flu, that, you know, that's, that's actually the disease that's causing this. In fact, it's actually a good thing. 
because it shows that your immune system has recognized this problem and is activating.